Hello, my lovies. I love you. And I'm so excited today because we're starting a new person, a new courageous person in the Bible. And it just so happens it's a woman. Her name was Ruth. And I want you to listen as we read so you can figure out why she was so courageous and understand how Ruth was courageous. We're just going to read the first part today. Now, so far, we've been in the Old Testament, and you are learning the books of the Bible as we're learning the courageous men and women of the Bible. So let's say the first few books of the Bible together, okay? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, and today is Ruth. This is the eighth book of the Old Testament. So find it in your Bible and go to chapter one. And we're going to just read the whole chapter because it's so good. <clears throat> All right. Get your eyes on your Bible because it's good for you to read it for yourself too. Okay. So in the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. A famine is when there's no food. Like, they either are having a drought, and so the crop, crops aren't growing, etc. Okay? A severe famine. We've not ever really experienced that. Um, there was the Great Depression, uh, <clears throat> and there's been some crop failures in the past, but <clears throat> we haven't really experienced famine like they experience in other parts of the world still today. At times, Africa and different places will experience famine when it's really hot and dry. So a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab. Now Moab was not part of Israel. <clears throat> Taking his wife and his two sons with him. The man's name was Elimelech. <clears throat> and his wife was Naomi. Their two sons were Malan and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And when they reached Moab, they settled there. Then, unfortunately, Elimelech died, and Naomi was left with her two sons. And the two sons married Moabite women, women that were from Moab. One married a woman named Orpah, and the other woman named Ruth. But about ten years later, both Malan and Killian died. This left Naomi alone without her two sons or her husband. Now in these days, um, they didn't have government help. And if you were a woman that was widowed and you lost your your husband and you lost and you lost your sons, then you really didn't have anyone to take care of you. So many times it would put the woman in a very poor and distressed situation. Then in verse 6, Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So they had had rain and they were growing crops again. So Naomi and her daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. With her two daughters-in-law, she set out from the place where she had been living, and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. But on the way, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back to your mother's homes, and may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. So in other words, Naomi didn't want the two women who had been married to their sons to be in the same situation that she was in. She wanted, she gave them permission and she blessed them to go back and find uh, another husband and live in security. Then she kissed them goodbye and they all broke down and wept. No, they said, we want to go with you to your people. But Naomi replied, why should you go on with me? Can I still give birth to other sons who would grow up to be your husbands? No, my daughters, return to your parents' home, for I am too old to marry again. And even if it were possible and I were to get married tonight and bear sons, then what? Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? 
No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me than for you because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. So <clears throat> she was saying, you know, if she had sons, then they could marry her other sons. But she doesn't. She's too old to do that. And Naomi is blaming God for her problems. And we know that evil and problems do not come from the Lord. The Lord allows them sometimes. Um, but he will make good out of them. But he doesn't cause um, uh, hard times to come to us. Um, he doesn't call, cause evil to come to us. Let's just say it that way. We may experience hard times, but it's in persecution or something and are of our own uh, bad choices, but not... He doesn't cause evil. God is a good God, and he never causes evil against us, does he? So in verse 14, again they wept together, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Look, Naomi said to her, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. Now notice, the, Mo the country of Moab, they were Moabites. And they worship false gods. They did not worship the one true God. And sometimes in different cultures, some uh, they may have you know certain idols and gods that they worship that are not true gods, but they are what they are uh, believe in until they come to know the one true God. So she's saying you should go back and be with your own people. What do you think Ruth is going to say? Look in verse 16. But Ruth replied, Don't ask me to leave you and go back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and I, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. So this is where Ruth had courage. Because she was leaving her people, her, her culture, her way of doing things, her where she's comfortable. And she's going to a foreign country that speaks a different language and has a different culture. But she's telling Naomi that she loves her and she wants her people to become her people. She wants her God to become her God. So uh, Ruth has become a believer in the one true God. And she has chosen to be courageous and to stay with Naomi and try to help Naomi because Naomi is old. She needs help for someone to look after her. So Naomi has committed herself to her, even though she was unsure of what might happen to her there, if she would even be accepted there. So uh, Ruth was very courageous. And in chapter 2, she's going to continue to be courageous as she seeks a way to help Naomi and to take care of Naomi. All right, I hope you listen to God today and be courageous when you need to be and be faithful. See you later. I love you.